The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, <coughs> giving us the example of this great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he awakens, wakens my ear to listen as, the, as those who are taught. The Lord God had opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my ad adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is psalm a portion of Psalm 31. We will pray this responsibly by half verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My heart is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my head. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. But when they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of, out of mind. I am as a broken heart. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They ought to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in, the, in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from the who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servants. And in your loving kindness, they me. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the, under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hopefully you have your passion booklet and um, please remain seated for the first part. And if you wish partway through where it indicates, if you wish to stand, please do so. Thank you. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. One of the 12 who was called Jesus, Judas Iscariot, 
went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, He answered, one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will be traitor. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. <clears throat> then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, So all become deserters because of you. I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, <laughs> you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I did not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, 
from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will cast this man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, threw it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all you make the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then? Would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were abandoned? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all of this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to the Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. And at least two came forward and said, This is about to them. I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. You are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has left me. Why do we still need witness? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them. For your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he, re he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? He is to Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed. And when he went, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not possible.
After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom the price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Jesus said, You say so. But when he but when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to relate to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. <laughs> Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, and they said, Pilate said to them, all of them said, then he asked, But they shouted all the way. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of the skin and blood. His blood is not. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood is not. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed them over to be crucified. <laughs> then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole corps around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, yeah. Yeah. They spat on him. And they took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, place that means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted God, let God deliver him down, if he wants to, for he said, I am not the son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land 
until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling to the lodge. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Surely this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of jo James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which had been hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the mother and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, after three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the two good days until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And when I was the first thing first. I would say to them, so they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we think of a funeral, or we contemplate and reflect on death, it is a time to be serious. It is a time to confront the truth of life. So what is the truth? The truth is... If the truth be told, we are imperfect. God is not. Sounds kind of straightforward, but sometimes we have a little bit of hope in that. What else is truth? The truth is that God loves us. Even with number one, the fact that we're imperfect, and because we are imperfect, and as we are. So there are no conditions on God's love. So really, number one, as long as we realize that God is the perfect one, we're in good shape. What else is there as far as truth? Jesus died for us. All of us. All of us. And so we hear in this gospel, and the one that preceded when we did the procession with the palms, a very interesting progression. 
We're out there in the hall and we have our palms and we're, we're, we're thinking of what happened before Jesus' crucifixion. And the words of the people were Hosanna. They were excited. It was happy. They're putting their cloaks down. They're putting these palms down. It's a great happy time. And then we flashed a little bit ahead to the uh, time with Jesus and his disciples in the upper room when he's with them. And they say to him, we will die for you. We will not betray you. And we go just a little bit further. And what are the crowds saying? Crucify him. The big change. And what we hear in what goes on in the story, the truth of the story is it's a small group of people who are really touching some of the intolerance that they have. They have. And that intolerance leads to anger. And anger leads to death. Now, it doesn't happen that way, thankfully, most of the time in, in our own daily lives. But again, when we are not open to what the message of God is, and we become intolerant, what are the things that die? The things that die are kindness. Some of the things that die are compassion and consideration for others. Love in the, and sometimes people do too when it's most extreme, and we find ourselves as individuals or a race very intolerant. And if we listen to that reading from Isaiah, I gave my cheek to those who plucked my beard. All the way that this person in Isaiah, which we see in the image of Jesus, who did nothing but help be kind and show the love of God to receives from these intolerant people abuse. That's not what we're about. Again, if we're thinking about the fact that this is Passion Sunday, and we're thinking about the death of Jesus on the cross, again, it's a time to be serious. What is the cause or the root of all of these problems? It becomes the twisted words others use most of the time, the words of God twisted to suit their own purposes and lies. This is not what God is about. God has shown us his love. God has shown us his grace and his desire for us to live well as his children, as sisters and as brothers. But what happens is then is, is listening to others rather than to God. And that's what happens with these crowds and all that stuff that we hear around Jesus's um, conviction, his arrest, sacrificing values, sacrificing our values, basically selling souls and all the others. That is the inherited history that we do have. But isn't it interesting if we go to sell our soul or we give ourselves over to that? What is it that Jesus does? He redeems. He brings back what we have foolishly given away. There was a lot of religious intolerance at that time. I would imagine we know that there's a lot now. How many people are refused baptism or marriage? or communion, or funeral. That's sad. Sometimes we don't accept others because they're different and they worship religiously in a different way. And that's, again, not what it's about. The truth is, is that God calls us all to be together. They call out for Barabbas instead of for Jesus. How many loaves did Barabbas multiply? How many people did he give sight to? Did he ever raise any of them from the dead? But we get confused at times in life. And you know what is interesting in that gospel? And it kind of really struck me as I reread it. Uh, and, and as we read it together, it's a great line to read together. 
when the, when the people say, let his blood be upon us and our children, what a heck of a thing to say. Inviting that kind of a, which they perceive to be a curse and an evil, let his blood be upon us, not just us who are doing this, but our children too. I'm here to tell you the truth today, it is, but it's not a curse. Let his blood be upon us. His blood is upon us. The blood that frees us from sin. The blood that we celebrate in our communion, that is the unity in the body and blood of Christ as sisters and brothers. So what people call upon themselves in a negative way, Jesus takes, sanctifies, and redeems, and we therefore share in the life of Christ as we receive his body and his blood in the communion and the Eucharist that we share. The blood of the Lamb takes away the sins of the world. God gives us what we ask for, but not what we intended. Because a lot of times we ask for crazy things. And God takes that and he blesses it and he makes it a wonderful thing. So really the truth and the reality of this is this is a day when we call this, a lot of times it's easy that the, the, the low hanging fruit, if you will, is to call this Palm Sunday because we all have our palms and it's a great part of the liturgy. But it's Passion Sunday. And the passion just doesn't refer to the death of Jesus on the cross, but it refers to the passion, the love, and the intense relationship that God has with us and we are to have with God and with each other. It's that passionate type of relationship where there is such a burning love and care and concern. People get hung up, no pun intended, on the cross. And they get stuck on that image and they forget what that image is merely a symbol of. Love. Mercy. Forgiveness and redemption. That's what we're about. So really, this isn't the celebration of a death or a funeral, but it is a very serious time to become very serious about our faith. Because then we sit back and we say to ourselves, what is the other continuing truths? We, we establish the fact that we're imperfect and God is not. That God loves us. That, that Jesus died for our sins. He died for all of us. Now here is what we look to symbolically next week, but at any time. We are made new. The potential for renewal and new life. This isn't just some kind of crazy little ritual that we do once a year because it's time. It is symbolic of that renewal that God offers us at all times, regardless of our age, regardless of our status in life, regardless of anything. Even, you know, people get hung up as Christians on a sin. Well, that person's a sinner. No, okay, we're redeemed. Taken care of. Bill's paid. We're redeemed. But now we got to move into that new life. Because that is really what God has given us. That's the message of the Father that comes to us through Jesus Christ, is redemption and new life. But if we sit back all the time and just think, oh, here we are, we're Easter again, pretty flowers. Okay. You know, I can take up what I gave up for Lent, get on with life. We miss the great grace that God offers us, the wonderful gift. What is it that God wishes to change or to make new in us? Oh, it's between God and us, each of us individually. Because God comes to every one of us and loves us dearly and wants us nothing to do, nothing more than to share that with each other. So if there's no difference between now and next week, other than the colors change and we're saying the, the A word that we don't use. If that's the only difference, we've missed the ball. Because God today shows us the passion, the love, how important we are to him and we are to each other. So Passion Sunday. Celebrate the change that Jesus has brought. And as one of the people in our Bible study had said so well, we see that Jesus gives a life to save him, and that life that he saves is ours.
May God be blessed. Prayers of the people. God, in his endless love for us, sends Jesus to take on human nature and suffers death upon the cross in order to unleash the shackles of sin. We pray for the church that it will always be a servant, the servant of all. May it boldly profess your boundless love for all humanity. Merciful God, yeah. Motivate world leaders to foster loving relationships amongst themselves and resist the temptations of power and war. May they gather all people and concentrate on meeting their needs. Give strength and hope to Ukraine. Merciful God, yeah. unite this nation's leaders to honor their people and settle conflict in a respectful manner. Help them to do your will and drive away from their hearts selfishness and corruption. May they hold their jobs as a public trust from you, refraining from personal glory. Merciful God, you are great. Help us to contemplate on our human inadequacies and the horrible price that Jesus paid for them. Merciful God, you are Inspire us to remember the hungry, the homeless, and the jobless. Merciful God, bless the sick with good health and strengthen belief in the resurrection to the dying. Merciful God. I also commend to your prayers, if you would please pray for Jean, Joan, Reese, and Mary, merciful God, Lord, keep us in your love, preserve our community, and do not let us become separated from one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Oh. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving 
and make good your vows to the Most High. All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all, creator of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements you brought forth, the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open to us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the blood now celebrate his gift to us. We now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this bread and this cup, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. God of our holy ancestors, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Deborah, Ruth, and Esther, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your work, your, excuse me, your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for power only and not for compassion, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor, glory, worship, and praise now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
Together with our brothers and sisters who are watching virtually and not able to receive communion in a physical form, but are nonetheless part of the body of Christ, we pray our prayer of St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot in this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Just like to thank the people who have been involved with the candlelight stations of the cross and for all who attended. And thank you for that ministry and the, that wonderful prayer opportunity. I'd like to remind you that next Sunday, which is Easter Sunday, of course, the first service will be at 7.30, not 8, 7.30. And uh, weather permitting, it will be in the garden. If it's in the garden, dress warmly. Unless we get an unexpected heat wave. It was very beautiful last year, but it was a little chilly. So 7.30 in the Memorial Garden for our sunrise service. The second service will be at 10 o'clock normal time and we'll be inside. If you plan on attending Maundy Thursday, this Thursday or Good Friday, this Friday, um, the service times are at 6.30 here in the church. If you uh, plan on attending and would like to help with some of the readings and the other things, please contact me because obviously there are the regular readings on Maundy Thursday and then uh, Good Friday, we have the uh, solemn collects as well as the passion again. So there are many different opportunities for us to read and to share those readings. So please call me 630 for both Monday, Thursday and Good Friday. Anything else? Good morning, everybody. If anybody would like to join the choir for Easter, we're having a rehearsal right after the service. Um, we have two songs, and we're going to have MIDI, we're going to have music. So hopefully you'd be joyful. Um, on page 11, there's three things about the Pope. 
We're having a meeting following the service in the back room. Um, to get a cup of coffee, meet in the back. And um, if anybody'd like to join us or sit in to see what we do, um, if you have any ideas, more than welcome. Um, the fellowship luncheon is tomorrow um, at Teresa. If you'd like to join us, it's at 12 30. Everyone's welcome. Oh, I'll write you a note. <laughs> um, Teresa had really great design. Um, on April 30th, following the 10 o'clock service, um, Marianne Goodman says she's going to lead us in making silk flowers. I had a Mother's Day, and it's like one for yourself. So. Sign up with the sign sheet in your card. Thank you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. I'm <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you, Joe. Uh, 